Hello Automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and I am excited to get the Govi Lira Smart Lamp opened up, show you what it's all about and show you some of the incredible colors and effects that this thing can produce. Now, given that the box is so large, this is going to be a hard one to show you as I get it opened up, but we're gonna do our best. Pretty par for the course from Govi. We have a number of manuals and they give us the ability to join their little VIP club. That you can share effects and get some points and stuff like that. Not something I'm big into. All right, now I've got a few things out of the packaging here we have a remote this is an interesting little remote they also gave you some mounting hardware and i've already noticed that this is magnetic on the back it actually sticks to their screws that you got so that's one pack of screws and then there's actually a second one right there when you get a screwdriver, you know you're in for it. Plus we have a power adapter. Now this converts from 100 to 240 volts down to 24 volts, and that's using their little connector right here. That's a pretty standard connector, but the 24 volts makes it a little bit different. Now we got a long box here, and I imagine this is gonna be some of our pole extensions, but this feels it might fall on me yep can't see lots of packaging here whoa whoa we're almost losing stuff here people we have three of these poles and they slide a little bit they're quite loud so i'm not going to do it a ton there are small differences between the three so i think this is going to be the top it has uh, just a cap on it uh, and then this one appears to have a little more hardware and a little less slide uh, this is not as long of a piece so we have three different components here and we're gonna have to see how all of that comes together we have this large strip here and this is going to limit i think the size of everything so you know even though those are a little bit adjustable i'm not sure how much adjustment we're going to get now this is a component obviously this is a power connector and a control connector uh, obviously here though you're going to have to be careful with this if you break this this is not something that you're going to be able to replace now the strip itself has some interesting components let me get some things out of the way it has these little ridges that are going to allow you to slide it into the other metallic pieces that I just showed you here's the base and the other side of that kind of specialized connector is sitting right there it's coming out of the stem you can see where you're gonna put a couple of little screws here in order to mount some of those poles and you're gonna connect your LED strip. So it's all gonna come together there. What we also have attached to this base, and this base is fairly heavy, which is gonna be really important. There is a microphone port on this little component of the controller, and of course you have the connection for the power for your transformer here that we had earlier. As I said, the, the base is fairly heavy. You can see the little Govi logo. This is going to hold it fairly well, I think, in the corner or wherever you place this. Here's the base, and it is a little bit uh, kind of that rubber, so it's going to stick a little bit. It's a lot like the surface of the Echo Show 10s. This is pretty standard stuff, but it's going to make sure that it doesn't slide around too much. It will make it a little bit tippy if you hit it hard enough. Um, oh, and I can feel some vibration through that. So this is a really different base. I can't turn it. I can't take it off. Although the Govi Lyra has a ton of effects and a ton of great features and uses, I picked out my five favorite. Number five for me is just Samsung SmartThings. I can get these integrated into SmartThings and you can't do everything, but stay tuned and I'll give you some details on that. But one of the best uses for this 
strip is actually the night light scene because it's so low and you can recreate this just by going to one percent brightness with any of the white colors or really any color you'd like number three is this music mode now it's called energic inside of the application so that's what you'd have to call it with amazon and that's actually one of my favorite uses here is with amazon's voice assistant you can set scenes like this Number two is the finger sketch mode. Now this is within what's called the DIY aspect of the application and it allows you to get as creative as you'd like with colors and also how the colors cycle through the LED strip and how fast it does so you can get really really creative and number one is the DIY modes ability to actually combine effects so you don't just have to use one effect you can use multiple and have it cycle through all of those effects as you watch over an evening now I always attach my power meter and I do some Lux or Lumens testing as well and there are some really different things about the Govi Lyra. Here's the chart of just white versus percentage when using the Google Assistant and what I want you to notice is at the very top it says 80-30. When we skip over to Amazon, the results change entirely. 38,000 is the number at the top when you're using white at 100% with Amazon. They're actually producing a very different white. When we look at blue, green, and red, the results are exactly the same. So they're both interpreting the word exactly the same. You'll find that the red is the lowest of the three in terms of brightness, and you'll find that across most lights. But when we look at power usage versus the brightness we're getting out of this light strip, Google again has a different curve, and you can see the power usage kind of tops out around 21 watts, but when we skip over to Amazon, we're up above 25 watts at the top end. So using Google will save you some power, but it's definitely nowhere as near bright. So what do you do with Google? Well, there's a couple of different things. You can see all the different colors on this chart, and if you use the term bright white you jump up quite a bit but most of the colors produced by Google on average are a lower lux and a lower power usage than when we use Amazon's voice assistant pretty much everything jumps up but what I'll say about controlling with Google is when you use their specialized colors I could not believe that I actually got a brown color out of this light strip when I asked for chocolate Corner lamp to 50%. Sure. Sure. Setting the corner lamp brightness to 50%. You're going to need a fairly good surface to work with here or a big space on the floor because this does get pretty long. What you're going to do with your top piece is get the holes aligned and then get the shorter screws ready to go. We're going to put a couple in there and you don't have to twist too tightly here. These aren't difficult to put in there but you don't want it moving then I'm gonna grab my middle piece and what I did is I pulled out the other slider and then I slid in the original one you're gonna get it all the way to the edge and then the holes should align again so we just need a couple more screws once you've put those two in you're ready to move to the final piece and if you're like me, that means you're going to struggle aligning these and it'll probably take you about five minutes to do that. But once you do, align the holes the same way again and put a couple of screws in. Now we're going to take our last piece and this is the only one that really matters in terms of orientation because it has these two holes fairly tight together at the bottom. So you want to take the other end, the end with the holes wider apart, take your hour to get that aligned and then push it all the way in and make sure that the holes are aligned again. Then you're going to drop in two more of those shorter screws and you're almost done. Now what you'll have at this point is 
the entire assembly for the pole. You should see that everything is flush and there's no gaps between this. This will really matter for the LED strip. Everything should be aligned if you followed the instructions here. Again, all of the edges should be really well aligned and at the bottom you should have these two holes. Then we're going to put in the last connector and you can see that the side with the extra hardware is on the bottom. We're going to drop in two more of the short screws and now we're going to put it in the base. Now this is a bit tricky and what you need to make sure you're not doing is pinching the cable that's coming out of the base. Then you're going to push it all the way down and we have to actually get the larger or the longer screws and we're going to drop a couple of those in. You can see my pole came a little bit separated from the base. Make sure that that's tightened up uh, against the base so that your holes all align. What you will have is that cable sticking out just a little bit with the connector on the end and you should have those screws fairly flush with the base. Now we'll take our cable and what you have to do here is align the color. So red is fairly easy to pick out and you're going to want to put that on the same side as the red in the base. Don't pinch too hard here. This is not a piece you want to break. Then you have to stuff the cabling in a little bit. And you'll have to be, again, careful here. You don't want to bend any wires so much that you snap them or break them. They weren't going to do that likely, but just be a little bit careful during this part. Then you take the flat end and at the very bottom of the base you're going to snap in the LED strip until it can kind of support itself here. So you can see I'm not holding that strip. I've got three to four inches pushed in and you can go a little higher if you'd like into the base. Then you're going to take the top of the LED strip and start at the very top, push it all the way to the top and then you start snapping in all along the length. So you start with the bottom, you go to the top, and then you smooth it all out. And you will end up with a little bump, but it'll just push the LED strip down into the very bottom of the tower here. Once you've done that, you have this little piece that you can just slide on, and this allows you to stick the remote on the tower for easy storage. The last thing we have to do is to connect the power adapter. So you're going to connect that to the base and plug it in the wall. And yes, you will have a few screws extra. Now there's a couple of things you need to think about. This is a microphone port. So if you want to use music mode, that has to be opened. And the orientation of this light actually really changes how it looks. So here it is facing out into the room. You want to think about that base and making sure you're not going to knock it over. If you face it out into the room, here's kind of what it looks like. You'll have a darker corner and then you will have some reflection off of your wall or your corner of your wall. However, if you turn this and face it towards the wall, now here's almost three and a half feet away from the wall, you can see you get quite a diffusing of light. And as we move in closer, obviously that diffusing effect is going to be less and less. So that's about two to two and a half feet. But the problem as we move into about a foot away from the wall is that the cable is sticking out the back. So Govi didn't give us options for managing the cable either in the base or around the base here. So you have to think about that when you're facing it towards the wall. But I think the effect is very nice facing the wall. So if you can deal with that, do so. Now, once we have it plugged in, this is what it does. It just sits there very brightly and you'll need the Govi Home application. We're going to hit the plus up in the top and get this set up. You'll need Bluetooth turned on on your phone and you saw I actually hit the Bluetooth button and it found the corner lamp right away. I just tapped on that and this allowed me to change the name. 
Then it searches for the Wi-Fi signal, and if you're already connected to your Wi-Fi as well, this is really helpful because it chooses that, and you'll just have to put in the credentials. Then it will make a connection, and you have to stay close to the lamp at this point, and then once it's made a connection, it will do an update, and you just hit the update button, and it'll take care of the rest for you. Again, don't move far away here you will end up interrupting the update. But if you don't feel like using the application or voice control that I'm gonna show you in a bit, we have a remote. It's got just about everything on it. So there's an on and off button, and when you use that on and off button, it will use the last mode that it was in. The color button changes to color, and you have the cool and warm feature to move in the direction of cooler light, as you can see I'm doing here, or warmer light. Then you also have the dimming buttons, which allows you to dim at about a 20% change each time you press the button, so you can increase the brightness or decrease it. The color button allows you to cycle through the different colors and these are just the plain colors. It won't sit in cycle, but you can adjust which color is being displayed. Then you can press the music mode button to put it into music mode and it will use the onboard microphone. In the back, if you ever need to change the battery, that's where it is. And that's pretty much everything you'll need with the remote. Let's walk through the application and I'll give you some demos as we go so you can see what this thing can do. Now, once you go into the application, you have five different sections along the bottom and you have a couple of sections in the main home page. So there's devices and there's smarts. We'll go through smarts in a little bit, but each of your devices is listed and you can turn them on or off and you can see the connectivity options you have at the moment. Plus there's the ability to change how the overall home page looks. Let's go into our corner lamp and then it will show you the connectivity. And at this point we can turn it on or off and this will just put it in the last mode. Now there is the effects lab, the timer, the brightness and the overall mode and then a number of controls below it. So the effects lab really just brings you into the ability to look at different color schemes and you can tap on each one individually and hold it to add to your my color scheme. Now where the my color scheme is, is down here at the bottom and this allows you to quick apply different colors to your effects and to the lamp itself. The timer is a quick option for scheduling. We can tap in, choose any time, hit done and choose the days and this will turn it on or off at different times. More importantly for many of you will be things like the wake up routines and the sleeping routines. These are very nice, uh, quick to set so you can go in, you can set the wake up time, you can choose the day it's on and the duration and you can go all the way up to 60 minutes but your shortest timeline for waking up is 10 minutes. So this will slowly brighten on the light and you can choose a final brightness level that maybe you don't want it too bright in your room and then you would hit the check mark. It's the same for sleeping. You can set an initial brightness and a countdown and have it ramped down. There's also the overall brightness. You can just adjust this. It only works in certain modes though. I'm gonna start with the music segment. This is very easy to manage. There's a couple of different effects. And the first thing you have to choose is whether you want your phone to be the microphone or the device itself. So you can choose your phone and then you can see it's reacting to my voice here as I go through the video. I can also choose a couple of different modes and I can choose that it's an auto color or a specific color. You can only choose one color in these modes. If you'd like, you can choose along this or you can grab the whole color wheel if you'd like. I like to use the auto color, it'll just cycle through things and when you go to the microphone on the device, you get these other modes. So energetic, rhythm, bounce, hopping, strike, and vibrate. There are some specific settings per mode, but sensitivity and dynamic or calm are what you're going to see on most of these. 
The color mode is one of the best ones. So you can go into the recommended color schemes and you can grab a certain style if you'd like. But this is probably just gonna be something you wanna play with yourself. So the first option is whether you want it to be a little bit more segmented or a little bit of a gradient between the segments here. And then each different segment you can choose. So I've chosen those two segments. I can choose a relative brightness for those two segments so you can see that they are a different brightness than the others. And then I can pick a color. Then I can uncheck those and go to the next set of segments. You can choose any number of segments. You can create patterns. You have the, the world as your oyster basically here. And you can always adjust per segment the brightness. This can create incredibly different effects. You can also use the whites, the different whites on the the pole here so you can see how it's allowed me to pick a white there but as soon as i go to any of these warm white or color whites it blows away all of the color so here's the other way that you can pick kind of those warmer whites or cooler whites to display within the full color version my colors are always down at the bottom so if you'd like to choose a segment and then choose one of those colors there you go the overall brightness control when you're within color and you're doing it on this segmented light mode here, that's not going to work. So you can't choose the overall brightness. You've got to choose it per segment. The next section is scenes. And I love this section. There's a lot of different types that you can choose here and they do seem to change a little bit over time. You will find per Govi device, this list of scenes is different. So each one of these has a different feel to it and there's a lot of different effects. I really enjoyed the fireworks scene myself and my kid really enjoyed that one. So I think that's one that a lot of people will enjoy. The breathing is a little bit nice. It's a, it's a bit of a calming version. There's also the holiday settings here that are really easy to use and some of the funny ones kids will enjoy again. DIY is kind of the combination of everything here. So when we go into DIY, if you have any of them set as a shortcut, you can choose those and these can be very complex. So I'm going to go into editing and you can create a new one or you can choose some of these other ones that you've created maybe in a different uh, device or something like that, you can add them to the shortcut. So you hit the shortcut management, and let's say I wanted this one and this one to show up on the shortcuts for this device. Well, there, I just did it. I can go back and now I can pick these other DIY scenes. I can hit the plus to create a new DIY effect. This allows me to set the name and I can change the icon if I'd like. They allow you to take a photo if you'd like even. There's also the ability to select groups, which I'll show you in a little bit. And the effect is kind of the first thing you're going to choose. So there's a finger sketch and then there's all these other modes. One of the most interesting ones is the combo mode. We'll get to that in a bit, but finger sketch is quite different too. So you can see that you can adjust the speed of the effect and you can choose the base effect as well. These are different, you'll wanna look at each one, but you choose a background color for the strip overall. So let's say we wanted blue. And what they mean by finger sketch is that you choose a color and you can see how they give you these palettes. And I think that's uh, really great to have. So if we wanted to choose fire, maybe that's a better idea than, than the overall, uh, than choosing blue and then trying to work with the fire palette. But let's say we wanted to create a bit of a fire effect. Here we go, and i that's what they mean by finger sketch. So I can pull in or, or create these little segments. And if I don't like something, I can delete a segment, and then you see it goes back to the background color. I can also undo the last thing I did and redo it. Plus there's the ability to clear the whole finger sketch if I'd like, and 
I can add multiple colors. So it's not like you're stuck on one color, but this is something that I think if you just hand a kid this and you let them play with this, they, they're gonna go forever. If I want to save this effect with the name, then I hit save and I can also apply it to the device to just see what the effect looks like. So this is the way that you just test your effect and then the save button saves it overall. But there's just the base gradient and you can choose this by sections or by the whole strip and then you can pick some of the colors that are in there and you can add multiple colors again from the palettes is usually the best option. There's the breathe where you have a subsection and a cycle and the speed and then colors again. Plus there is jumping which is just gonna leap between the colors and there's stacking. There's also crossing, rainbow, and I'm just gonna let you play with most of these types, but the one that I think is one of the most interesting is the combo. So when you hit combo, you get to choose a bunch of different ones. So the first thing you do is pick your first effect. You choose whole, subsection, whatever you want, and you hit confirm. Now it's added that in. Your colors will apply throughout all of the things you're going to add. So now I've got four colors and let's say I want a rainbow to move up with those colors. There I go, I've added that. I can add in a breathe cycle and you can see how you can just keep adding and it will rotate through all of these. So now if you save this, it will literally cycle through these different effects. It'll go gradient, rainbow, breathe, and back to gradient. And you can set the speed for the whole effect as well. This is one of the most comprehensive setups that you can do for any RGBW light. So I think this is really, really impressive. Now the other thing that can happen happen is let's say we have saved this. I've just called it test and I hit save. Now I can share this within the application and this is going to just you decide if you want to create this but what this does is it leads us into another whole side of the application where you might want to go. So I've gone down to the earth section or the world section and you have to choose the lamp that you would like to be applying effects to and what this is is a community of people who've created effects that you can apply to that product so as you select one it will show you different effects now there are some DIY effects and you can go in you can watch the video it's very much like any other social media application and then there's an apply effect button and there is a save effect button. So this has been saved to my DIY and I can apply that to my light. Now when I go back into my DIY section, here it is right here. This is the one that I just saved. And of course I could add that as a shortcut that I wanted to show up every time. So once you've favorited it, Here's where it shows up in the application and you can pick it anytime to apply to your light. So there's a whole library of effects if you don't want to create your own. There are a few more settings for our light here. We can change the device name and I like this device safety choice. So if it happened to get stolen by a roommate or something, here you go, you can select that and then it will only be able to be paired with this account even if they factory reset it. Now the Wi-Fi settings, if you need to change those, you can change them and with this kind of a product, you just leave Bluetooth on and that'll work. There's also the remote control pairing. If you need to repair that, you can go through that. And there's a user guide for connection to Amazon and Google voice assistants. You also get the Mac address, the product model and the hardware version if you ever need it. And you can delete device and get support up here. The other segment in the application that's really important is the smarts. And again, we can organize this section a little bit differently, but for now we have schemes, schedule, and if we have just the same model of device, it's easy to control them together. We can create little groups. And then there's a couple of other general sections here. So for any of these sections, you have to hit the plus and then you're starting to create one of those. So We'll call this one test scheme, hit confirm, 
and now you have to add the devices into it that you would like to control together. So let's say I wanted to control those two together. Now I've hit that and you can see what you get in terms of options within each of these things. So now I have these two devices in this effect and then you get a number of options and it depends what type of thing that you're creating or type of smart thing that you're creating as you create them you can go in you can set the different uh, components of the effect that you'd like and then you can turn that scheme in this case on or off so here's the schedule and i think this is one of the more useful ones because you can choose a number of modes or independently you can choose different modes per device as you create a time point so if i hit plus i can choose a time let's just choose a uh, slightly different time and then I can add multiple options or multiple actions so you can see how I could choose even a DIY effect to turn on at this specific point I can also choose the colors and I can choose the different modes that we have so that allows me to add that one and then I can add the other devices and they all have their own DIY effects and their own set of modes that they have access to so this is a way that you can schedule these devices and create really good uh, effects in your space the same model type of smart requires you to have two of the same but then that allows you to basically execute effects that you would expect the general Wi-Fi devices is just allowing you to pick from your Wi-Fi devices and the general Bluetooth devices just allows you to pick from those. Now, everything I have is both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi at this point, so I can pretty much pick everything. There is, of course, a whole profile section. You can go into the messages if you happen to get any, and there is the ability to add shortcuts as widgets on your home page on your phone now this is going to depend on your phone type but you can see that i can add a corner lamp so what i can do once i have that is choose a widget and then i can go find the govi application and i can pick my shortcuts and then add it to my screen there are my two shortcuts that you saw me add and again this allows me to just execute turning on and off the corner lamp so it's not super useful in my opinion what might be more useful is that you can use the shortcuts or the smarts so if you set up one of those more complex schemes or the more complex general setups then i think you're going to have a pretty good widget uh, that you can use of course you can edit overall account information there's nothing here really related to the device we're talking about today so that's actually where i'm going to leave the walkthrough of this application to connect govi and amazon's voice assistant we have to have the miss a application and we go to devices hit the plus up top and then go to add device and when you do that you can actually search or you could go in to the light section either way you want to do this you'll be able to find govi once you tap on that they're going to allow you to discover devices and in a couple of minutes it'll come back and have found that device now that you have the govi skill enabled or you've discovered your devices they will show up in the list of lights in the devices page now you can see i have a govi table lamp in my basement group and you can continue to add lights to different groups but the corner lamp it just added down here in the general list now i can go in i can get into some deeper details and if i'd like i can control the lamp so i can turn it on then I can adjust the brightness down if I'd like and then I can go into the different colors and you can see how I can go through all the different shades of white and then I can go into all these different colors but there's more control that we have so within each of the different modes that we have we can set a individual thing so I can set energetic music mode and I can also set the different scenes 
So you can see you have quite the list of scenes. That's all of the different ones. And I'll show you how to do this voice control in just a second. Now, if I go into the corner where the little gear icon was, I also have the ability to put in an energy estimation for this. This will help you with the overall management of energy in your home. And I'll show you where that goes. If I'd like, I can also edit the name in the app and I can disable this if I'd like or delete it from the application entirely. There is of course the routines capability and with a light you're not using it on the trigger side of things so you can't use it with the when this happens segment but you can add an action and when you scroll down to smart home this allows you to choose the light and then we'll find our corner lamp again hit next and then again you can see that you have access to all the modes again so we can select the different modes and or we can select the different scene mode so you're only going to want to select one of the scene or one of the music modes and you'll want to turn it on so we can choose those two things and you can see that it's added that as an action and you can use whatever trigger you'd like including your voice so if you want kind of a, a simpler command just use voice and you can set multiple commands now with Amazon's voice assistant or you can set a schedule or a number of other smart home devices can trigger this on so if you have motion sensors you'd like to use that or a door sensor whenever you're coming into a room well you can use one of those whenever it opens then you can have it trigger on that that's a routine right there that will happen every time then with any of the lights you can put them into groups so this is sitting in my living room and i have a living room group i can go into it and you're noticing that i have no lights well that's by design up in the top right i hit that edit button and now i get my full list of devices anything i've brought into the amazon application and my corner lamp can go into that so i've selected my corner lamp and now if I'd like at any time, I can say, turn on the lights in the living room or turn them off in the living room. So you have this other method of control now. Set corner lamp to blue. Set corner lamp brightness to 50%. Set living room lights to white. Set corner lamp to rainbow. Set corner lamp music mode to rhythm. Set corner lamp scene mode to fireworks. Corner lamp to 100%. I did experience some failures with both Google and Amazon's voice assistants when trying to control the brightness. This often seemed related to having been in the app and using the color mode with the subsections. Anytime I did that, it didn't seem to control the whole strip by its expected brightness and was instead trying to use the app control. One thing I found that helped this is to turn the strip white and then it would be available for full brightness control. Getting the GoV Lyra light strip to work with Google Home is just as easy as adding any other device. So I went up top left, hit the plus, hit setup device, and now I'll choose works with Google. We'll have to type in Govi. That's usually the easiest way to find any sort of service here because the list is so long. And then you're going to choose Govi Home. It'll ask you to link your account and you need to put in the credentials to the Govi Home application. Once you've done that, it'll link all of your Govi light to Google Home for control. Once you've added your 
Govee lights to the Google Home application, you can control them here. Now I've scrolled down to the bottom where it says link to you because it didn't bring up the opportunity to put them into a specific room. So I can go in and there's a whole control scheme here. So I can hit the on button, I can adjust the brightness as I see fit. And of course I can do this by voice, which I'll show you in a minute. And then I have the color opportunity so I can pick from Google's palette of colors. The other thing that I can do is I can go into settings and there's not a ton of settings here, but I can add it to a home. I have to pick from my different homes that I have in the Google Home application. Then I hit move device and now I can pick a room. So again, this is sitting in my living room and now I hit next and that's where it will go. And again, I have this ability to control by saying turn on the lights in the living room or change the lights to blue in the living room. The difference for Google control versus Amazon's voice assistant control is I can't use those set commands to a certain scene or a certain mode in music mode. So really here all I have is control of groups or of the device individually. Inside of the application, I have the ability to turn off all the lights in the living room and I have the ability to individually turn them on or off here as well. Let's walk through some of those voice control options though and show you just what you can do. Corner lamp to green. Corner lamp to 50%. Living room lights to red. Sure, changing three lights to red. Set corner lamp scene to breathe. In terms of Samsung smart things working with Govee, well, I have a whole other video for you because it is a bit of a process for getting these products working with Samsung smart things, but I did manage to do it and the control is pretty good. So check out that video. It's up on screen now. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate automate.